Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the light campaign V3.7 for a new let's play that we are going to start on insane difficulty. It is Lowy Tech Sports and we are going to make sports cars for the masses. Well, that is the goal at least and of course we are Fruinians. Uh, there is a little bit of a twist to this one because once again you the audience are going to design the cars, but we're not going to uh, make a, a car specific judging of um, the entrance to this little competition, but rather it is a photo competition. So you are going to design your cars for uh, the uh, respective episode, uh, submit your, your photo of your car, and you are allowed to Photoshop, but not alter parts of the image. So that means you can change lighting, you can change colors, um, but you cannot add parts to the car or decals or anything like that. It is supposed to be just pure automation and also no mods. And also every single car that you are making for the competition needs to be based on the same body model that I'm going to pick in within my little let's play here. So that should be a fun little challenge and uh, of course um, there is a time limit to it all. It's w one week within release of the episode which asks you to create one of those entries. All right, I think it is time to kick this off with Low Tech Sports. So we are going to start as Fruinians, as Low Tech Sports, and we are not starting on casual, but rather customize our difficulty level. Uh, I don't want to make it as insane as possible. Uh, I, the game currently is quite challenging. So let's start with Outer Factory. Oh, score multiplier. I would like to have score multiplier of 6.0 if that is possible. That is, would be done with competition level 101%. This probably lowers it a lot. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's a big, big difference. And yeah, it does make a big difference. So, hmm. How are we going to to get that? Should we just up it by 1%? I think so. 101% competition level, cash levels, 100 million to start out with, but medium plots. Quite important for the progression we want because the, um, the theme of this, of course, is ma mass market sports cars and make them cheap and low tech, uh, but yet appealing. And that means, the cheap part means that you very soon have to go towards medium factories and producing um, the uh, with steel presses so that you can have steel panels because handmade aluminium panels, they are quite expensive as they should be. And yeah, I think this is all set up correctly now. Now we just hope for a decent-ish economy for the start the company and we should be good so score multiplier 6.04 if you want to play along congratulations on starting lowy tech sports yes <laughs> i find this so funny uh we haven't changed that yet but it's so funny your family connections have led you to ac have access to a level zero car dealership network <laughs> <laughs> to help you get started. It's like, yeah, your family is hated by everyone, so <laughs> you're actively uh, being given a hand at, uh, an empty hand, just basically instead of a middle finger, that, that is their way of giving you the middle finger. So yeah, we have to make it ourselves. Okay, well, that is fine. We are going to build the car from scratch, and we are going to, with our first build, this is an interesting start. I need to uh, to figure this one out. The the market itself. If you if you look at this, let, let me let me give you the case. I I know I'm already starting to go off tangents, but let's keep this on point. I want to show you why we have to stay with Infruenia for quite a while, and that would be if we go to market demographic sizes 
and not limited to our awareness. Oh, the economy is currently is booming. Doesn't help us. Um, you see that, okay, Farina, good, good, good. Sport, light sports, we're probably going into that. Sports, budget, and sport, that is definitely a category. Convertible sport and convertible sport budget, yep, certainly categories we want to cater to. And then GT. We are going to try and a little bit cater to GT, but not GT Premium. That's way, way too high up the ladder, uh, the ladder. And now, let's check this out. You see the problem. Do you see the problem? No sports cars in Hedvesia until 1955. Uh, and no light sports until 1980. So Hedvesia, being open to us from the start, basically useless. Not great. And then, De Lua is going to open to us in 1950. And look at that. Well, 1955 for uh, light sports cars. Light sport premium, well... <sighs> A little bit there sports cars okay yeah they do have them gt they like and convertibles uh yeah but we are convertible sport so the lure yes maybe but their dealerships cost a lot for the uh, low levels you get so we might not be in the position to buy them early on so we are just going to aim towards the lights uh, oh wow that was sharp rise in the market there eh? uh, we're going to aim for light sports and we're going to pick the what is it 2.3 meter uh, coupe body that is available early on and that will be this one and this is the first one you are going to base your um, competition entry on as well and oh by the way if you are wondering how do I enter, where do I send this shit, what are the rules exactly, there's a description link down below uh, and in the description of this video. And that give, gets you to a thread where I've detailed all the uh, basics of this challenge and where to send things. And you will have a week of time to do so. Happy, happy designing. So this is the one we are taking, the 1945 coupe, and we do have, very nicely, a convertible version of it as well. And I think what we have to do in order to survive early on and get started is to cater to a market as wide as possible. We can't use steel panels because medium factory. Now we have the tooltips here as well to, to help you out. So uh, minimum factory size, tiny for for the aluminium there, and then steel presses require medium factory size. Yeah, ladder frame because, well, space frame, just just too advanced for what we are trying to do. We're not building hypercars here, and then double wishbone front, semi trailing rear. We don't have to go super fancy. And now, let's make a new engine. For now, we just call it the family and variant one. That's fine. And what do we want to make that? Probably going to specialize in inline sixes. That is uh, a happy medium. I think so. I think that is a pretty happy medium. Um, it's also, yeah, it's, it's a little sporty, of course. And it's a little smooth, very smooth. And I think we're starting with a small one. How about a... Uh, 7575 75. that should give us two liters roughly yeah yeah that is that is nice square two liter inline six and of course we are not going to get fancy rather i think we are oh now let's let's consider our upgrade paths we could go with push rod that will ensure that we have um, basically no revability, but, oh well, it's not that bad. We have only 75 bore, so we can can hammer this thing. Um, even as a pushrod engine, probably would rev to like 5,000, even early on. Almost. With a bit of, bit of uh, quality in there. Um, but I think I want to go down the direct acting overhead cam route because that gives us familiarity into dual overhead cam. On the other hand, we should be low-tech sports, right? And low-tech sports 
Doesn't sound like do dual overhead cam, does it? Also, I am probably quite known for the the guy who doesn't see the benefits of pushrod engines. Me, me, me. I'm 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 insulted because he doesn't like pushrods. Um, yeah, I don't like them, but that, that's that's neither here nor there. So let's play with pushrods, <laughs> so that you see me use them for once. Uh, we are going to be really low tech and go from pushrods. As we um, called them in German, rots. Yeah, you, you Germans, you know. You can explain in the comments below what rots means. Okay, please, please do that. So uh, push rod. We have plenty of familiarity in that. So and it's just a two liter. Look how compact this thing is. That is one of the main advantages of push rods. They are amazing when it comes to compactness. And uh, you can basically fit twice the engine size in, in an engine bay. Which we, of course, aren't doing. We are Freenians. Are you mad? <laughs> so this is a little counter to, to our Freenian heritage. But uh, that is looking all decent. It, the engine bay doesn't even see the engine at the moment. It's nice. Okay. So standard components in here. All good. Uh, yeah, push hot's probably going with a 40. And how about a 7.5? Aspiration is straight for that. Let's go with dual. Fuel type 92. 13.5. And optimize for 3.5 thousand RPM. Um, let's guess a maximum RPM of 5k. If I go with plus 2. Um, and... Do we want to already put in some quality here? With going with push rod, that is probably possible. Currently at this quality one, we're 14. This is 16. Uh, let's check out this. This is 30.8. 30.8, and that is 30. Oh, yeah, nice and similar. That's great. They that would be. 27 here. Oh, that's without the familiarity. Yes, of course. So that makes it like 20-ish. That's great. We are going tubular headers. Oh, engineering. To, uh, engineering to, no, seven is fine. We only put one muffler on there. Yeah, almost correct for the revability of this. Topping out at 4.4. Four. Mm, not great, but still some more in this one. 80 horsepower, 82. If we don't want to limit it, let's check out our flow chart. Yeah, we could. We don't want to have too much, too much wheel spin early on. So let's let's keep it a little closed, and we should be fine. But this is revving too high. Nope, that's the wrong slider. So this is a lot better. Uh, reliability will be through the roof, which is also decent choice for the lower end demographics we are trying to cater to because they do value their reliability the only thing we need to do here is up compression by one and the engine is already tuned how easy was that push rods it's magical so the first one we're going to build is the 1945 coupe and let's make it large yes look at this so much room so much room for everyone uh, you don't have to, to do that for whatever you are designing. But uh, let's see. We're going with three ratios. That's more than enough. And probably something like... Uh, aiming for 200? I mean, we're not going to get there. But that should give us gearing, which is adequate. So let's see. Medium. Now yeah, we can go sports compound. And lot large. I like this with this body because it can have pretty large wheels. You can put 15 inches on there, 15 inch rims on there. Um, okay, 145s it is. Yep, it's looking good. And lots of brakes because of the 15 inches. And then put it somewhere there maybe to start with. See where we end up. Okay, no under tray. Um, interior, right. So, do we do our two-seater first? That would be the light sports one. Uh, lots of cargo space, anyway. And 
Uh, do we want to go for sport? That is quite expensive. Or do we want to go for standard because of cheap and nasty? I don't want to pay for both. I don't want to make two different variants of it. So maybe we just go for the sports and... Ooh, uh, that's expensive. Do we go with none? I mean, that's a massive difference. But also a massive difference in engineering time. So maybe we go, go, do go with none for now. Because that will make the car get out faster. Uh, put plus three in the steering. No power steering, so it doesn't take that much. Um, how much engineering time is on there? 16.3, as is. And with this, it's just 12. Yeah, still hurts you. But it's fine. It's fine, we can live with that. Uh, standard 40s. Some safety. This isn't looking too bad. Apart from light sports, they kind of hate it. Oh, oh, wait a second. Low comfort penalty. We have zero comfort. Well, yeah, that is probably because of the automatic suspension tuning, which is fucked. Uh, so we go for Sport. Sport. And they like us better now. Sports does like us even better, though. Uh, what is the problem with you guys? Hmm... We have higher drivability, we have higher, much higher sportiness, low comfort, and prestige is lower. Uh, okay. It's probably just pricing and... Yeah, it's not that much of a difference. We're much lighter. So let me just do uh, some quick suspension tuning. And this is looking pretty much spot on in regards to steering behavior. Now, let's check this out. Do we want to dampen them a little bit more? Like this? Yep, definitely. And probably lower lower that a little bit. Yes, you could see... Why, well, you, you might be wondering, why did it jump that much here? Uh, that is probably because of the high-speed steering. Yep, there you go. And... Yep, that's perfect. And the other one was catastrophic oversteer. Yeah, this, this doesn't feel quite right. <laughs> no, it's like, don't hit that grain of sand along the side of the road with your rear tires because you will be gonzers. Yeah, that's not not how much on the edge you want to be. Now let's check out the market for this one. Uh, I'm not so convinced about our rating in light sport. We haven't tuned the brakes yet though. Ooh, oh yeah, and they do need some tuning. Yay, we just broke the 100 with a bit of brake tuning and uh, gearing. Better gearing. We did have gearing before as well, it was just a little sucky. Uh, yep, we are now doing 14.1 seconds from 0 to 100 with our push rods. And now the big question. Should we go with premium or none? <sighs> premium or none? Look at that. Sport just shoots up like crazy. I think we have to go with premium. There's nothing wrong with the premium package. Apart from it taking 10 months, which are straight added to the 8.4 there. So that is a 19, no, 8, but I can't, I can't, can't math. Yeah, that's almost 19 months worth of engineering time just on this. Right, let's go with it, even though that lowers our um, our competitiveness in light sport. That is fine, it's just because of affordability, and as soon as we facelift this thing, um, the package, the entertainment package, will have come down in price a lot already. It's like five years on from now, yeah, that will have almost halved by then. Um, not quite, but like two thirds or something. Now uh, let's re-optimize and then see where we are in the market. Yeah, yeah, I'm liking this a lot better. That is good stuff. Um, we do cater to... Oh, ooh, this is nice. This is nice. Um, we do cater to the Light Sport Premium and the Sport with this one. And the Light Sport will probably fall along the wayside because of the Premium package and we are going to hand build the car in our small factory. And then we are going to make a convertible version as well. We might consider doing a um, a four-seater version for the GT. It's 25% more there. 
might be a good idea. These are these guys also want to have a um, a four seater, and of course a different body type. It's fine. I I think we're going to make that a convertible as well as a four seater with the same exact interior and everything. And now you're probably going like, oh, but Carob, Carob, you only have a small one factory that is going to lower its efficiency like crazy. And to that I say, yes, correct, but we are not going to be super efficient and uh, stuff anyway. It is not that competitive. We just need to get cars out there that cover a wider market uh, than just one category because Spurinia is small. We start with zero awareness. So that is tough. You need to have a bit of a spread so that you're not focused on one little thing. But instead, each each one of those cars will be selling small amounts, not even filling for our small one factory. So, yeah. Um, otherwise, I would say, yeah, okay, you're right. Um, but now, in this starting situation, I think it is viable to start with up to three uh, different variants if they are different enough and we shall see if they are so first I should probably give this stuff names and for the naming we are this time going with planets and their moons because currently as my I take a dump lit literature I'm reading an, a university book um, on astrobiology or rather rereading it after I took that course many many years ago and it was fascinating so uh, inspired by this I think we are going to do a planet and then we choose a moon for that trim and with every facelift uh, the names get changed around a bit. Or oh, would that work? Oh, we are updating the trims, so that wouldn't quite work. But there are many moons, uh, and maybe that will be the Saturn too. <laughs> Although that's also a, ra a rocket, right? So, um, yeah, let's go with Mimas, I would say. That's a nice little name for a small car that is a little sporty. Uh, Mimas has a massive crater on it on the on the side that was a, a big big bump in it. Let's hope you are not producing big bumps in in the Saturn Mimas um, while you are on the test track. So I think it will have to be this Mimas S2, like two seater, Sport 2, Sport 4, Convertible 2, because I think the convertible version of this one does only have a two seat option. Oh yeah, GT really likes it. That is nice. Let's remove the pin from here. Do we have to retune? Oh yes. Oh yes, there's some retuning to be done. Uh, we need to get that one down, so more grip in the rear, please. Let's just lower that. There you go. One more. That should be pretty much spot on. Uh, they... No, they uh, value their sportiness. So let's go with that. Of course, don't forget about the brakes. This is looking good. Well, it's not looking good, but that's all you can do, basically. Uh, also, please don't set up your cars like this in reality. That is not recommended, because if the rear is at the limit of grip, then uh, as soon as it's a little wet, that one, that end is going to go away and kill you. While this one happily grips still uh, with a little bit of wet. So as the the grip would be lower to like here or there. But yeah, that one will be a, a little troublesome. And now for the convertible. I think, yeah, this is clearly a, a two-seater. Uh, let's also drag, oh, it's already dragged to the front. Uh, that's fine. How is this going? Ooh, convertible sport, nice. Let's remove this one. That's looking to be a seller. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, that's also pretty much spot on there. Brakes are good. And everything looking all right. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly where I want things. So this one should be done. What are the markets saying? Ooh, look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, we're going with the naming schedule. Uh, sch schedule? Uh, theme? No. Uh, uh, scheme, yes, naming scheme of uh, I6, okay, so far so good, and then R, of course, not standing for race, but rather ROTS, 
Rotz 2 liter. Okay, perfect. And this is the Rotz 46. <laughs> awesome. And the Rotz 36, uh, 40, 46 will be built in this little factory. Beautiful, isn't it? Uh, I don't know what they did with the uh, foliage around the place. Maybe, uh, maybe there was too much rots around. Um, and we shall see if we can build this thing. That is looking all good. It's not too expensive. Oh, this is at zero. Yeah, we don't need that at zero. 728 engines. Oof. Okay, that's pretty efficient. Don't need that many. 55 months. Mm. We can lower this one, though. That is a lot quicker. 46. But, yeah, we shall tweak this one. Once we have the car set up, I uh, just continued with this one. It's not assigned any car, so you don't have a production plot uh, just yet. Let's re uh, reconsider that once we have set up our car factory. We want to produce all three cars in here. There are no special requirements. Uh, this is, of course, the new screen in the latest patch. Quite handy. You can just deselect individual ones. If there's a car that you... Um, that would basically slow down all production. You can just deactivate it in here. You could do that before as well, but uh, for engines, there's a, a case where you, um, if one of your engines requires forge, but you don't have a forge, you would be able to build none of them instead of just being able to deselect the one that, ha you, that wants to have the forge. So that has been fixed with adding that screen. And I think it's clearer than it being hidden here. These pictures still look a little weird, but yeah. So let's put this at. Uh, we can get away with, uh, away with high tooling. We're not making many cars, but we don't need to make many cars. I do want to get them down in price though. So where does. Ooh. It does get down in price a lot. Yeah. 75 automation. That's very high. Let's see where we end up with the, um, the slider. Especially for something that is uh, no mass production is very high. 65! Holy shit. Okay, that's a lot. So let's add some pressure. Uh, let's reduce some reliability. And let's reduce the tooling. We're still making plenty. Alright, 52. Yeah, okay. That's not too bad. Um, 50... 52 months. I think we can live with this one. The interior really pushes it up again. It's the second largest vector in this sum. So, yep. Ouch. But, yeah, I think we are, we are fine with 52 in total. The engine factory really isn't taxed. We can reduce the price a bit. Just ignore the factory. That will be fine. We're not taking any loans. This project will cost us 23.3 million. It's okay. Forecaster tool. Of course, quite useless for this one. Uh, because, well, we have zero awareness, so we're going to sell zero cars. And so let's deactivate everything and just manually uh, increase everything to 20%. That's pretty safe. Good estimate for how much you, you need to mark it up if you don't include any of these. So you would only, you would not, not, you would just break even, but not pay off any of the investment in that case. And these already look pretty promising. That's looking good. We do want to reduce shift count, though. I don't want to ever go beyond two shifts. That is pretty killer at the start. So now we see engine project 46. Yeah, we need to re-enter that one and just tweak it a bit. I don't want to get to like the 52 or anything that is is not something I really want although I could do so by lowering the funding that is probably a really good idea that is a really good idea funding and pressure can be lowered and that gives us higher reliability and of course a lot less costs very good all right, I think we are all set up. This is looking good. Uh, I really like our prospects here. 
I think we will very soon after releasing the car get some harsh competition, so I'm, I need to facelift instantly. And probably one thing I should do is to uh, design an engine now already, like very cheaply, but basically another inline six but larger, so that I have something to go on for future um, car projects. Or I'm going to do that in parallel with the facelift, although we might be very cash strapped at that point. Uh, doesn't really matter. We will be cash strapped anyway. All right, and I think this should conclude the first episode. You are going to go ahead and design your car, your version of the Saturn Mimas. Uh, which version you choose is up to you, really. And uh, yeah, follow the link in the description to get to the rules of the competition and what it entails. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.